Dear participants, Assalamu alaikum. On behalf of Shifa College of Medicine, Shifa Tamir Millage University, and Shifa International Hospital, I welcome you all to attend this webinar, which we are conducting today to take students' perspective on e-learning. I am Dr. Fahad Azam, Associate Professor of Pharmacology at Shifa College of Medicine, and I will be moderating this event today. I will introduce our guest speakers and panelists shortly, but before we proceed any further, I will recite a verse from Holy Quran with its translation. Awalam Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Awalam Yadafakaru fi and Fusihim. Ma Halakallah Samavati will order the Mabai Nahuma illa will Haki, who actually Musama. In Nakasir Amin Nasi will for Bihim Lakafiru. Translation is Do they not contemplate with themselves? Allah has not created the heavens and the earth and what is between them except in truth and for a specified term. And indeed, many of the people in the matter of the meeting with the Lord are disbelievers. We have a disclosure to make that the faculty, speakers, CME planning committee, reviewer, moderator, and any individual connected to this activity confirms that they do not have any relevant financial relationships with any commercial interests to disclose. I now welcome all our panelists and guest speakers, and I will introduce them to you very shortly. We will give you their detailed introduction and background later during the webinar. But to summarize, we have these guest speakers and panelists. Our first guest speaker is Dr. Janet Stevens from University of Liverpool, UK. Our second guest speaker is Dr. Zaya Kayum, Vice Chancellor of Alamai Bal University. We also have medical educationists, uh, Dr. Aisha Abdullah from Peshawar Medical College. And from Shifa Tamir Millage University, we have our Dean of Faculty of Health Sciences, Dr. Mohammad Amir, and our Vice Chancellor, Professor Mohammad Iqbal Khan. I will take just one more minute here to thank our collaborating partners for this webinar. Today, we are very fortunate to have students as panelists from some of the leading institutions of our country. We have student panelists from Alafanj University Medical College, Dow Medical College, we have CMH Karachi and CMH Lahore students on board. We have student panelists from Islamic International Medical College representing Rifa University. Uh, we have uh, students from Peshawar Medical College, from Shalimar Medical and Dental College. And we also have students from Zaudin Medical College representing Zaudin University and Shifa College of Medicine representing Shifa Tamir Medical University. I would like to thank administration and management of all these institutions who gave us full support to collaborate for this webinar especially Professor Dr. Amjad Siraj, Dr. Rahila Yasmin, Dr. Zahid Bashir, Dr. Anila Jali, Dr. Aisha Abdullah, Dr. Almas Farhan, and Dr. Nila Hussain. Uh, I would also like to welcome our special guest for today, Dr. Atsusi Harumi, and he will also be talking for a few minutes with us. Um, and I would also like to thank all our basic and clinical sciences faculty members who put in their best effort during the last few months to educate themselves about technicalities of online tools of curriculum delivery and assessments. And they tried their level best to give best possible education during this very difficult time. So a very quick summary of the sequence of events of this webinar is that the total duration of this webinar is one hour and 30 minutes. After talk of Dr. Janet Stevens and Dr. Zaya Gayum, all participants will be moved to different breakout rooms where they will interact in small groups with students of all participating colleges. In the first 20 minutes, all audience will discuss online curriculum delivery in their respective rooms with students in small groups. Then each participant will be moved to some other room where they will interact with a different group of student panelists to discuss online assessments. Each breakout room will last for 20 minutes and after 40 minutes, all participants will be brought back here to the main webinar area where we will discuss summary of these discussions. I will now request our first speaker, Dr. Janet, from the University of Liverpool. So uh, over to you, Dr. Janet. Good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me OK? Yes, Dr. Janet. Excellent. Uh, I was very excited to learn about this webinar. and. Um, I was honoured to be asked to make some introductory comments and I want to explain why I think it's so exciting. Some of you may know that in the past 10 years I've been involved in teaching a course in Pakistan for teachers in medical and dental colleges. This course is aimed at improving teaching, in, teaching and learning in the colleges 
And one very important aspect of this course, which we stress over and over again, is the importance of learning from student feedback. When we started the course, the idea of consulting students to find out about the quality of our teaching was not a widespread idea in Pakistan. Some teachers found it unbelievable that students could give us useful information, and they also found it undermining of their status as teachers. We required our course participants to do two things, as well as gathering evaluation information from classes. The participants on the course have to interview three students, and this is to learn about what they actually do when they're studying. And for many course participants, this interview task is revelatory. Students tell them honestly about what they do, what they actually do when, uh, when they are supposed to be studying, what they find difficult and what they enjoy. More than anything else, this task is likely to, behave, to change teachers' behaviour. This seeking feedback from students has become much more the norm in Pakistan over the 10 years that we've been teaching this course. But we still can forget what valuable information students can give us. And they're very willing to give us this information. In this strange COVID era of virtual classes, it is so vital that we find out from students what it's actually like for them and what we could do to make learning better and easier for them. There is another aspect of student experience which we emphasise on our course over and over again, and that is diversity. Obviously, all students are unique, but there are some important general differences in their experiences, and we need to pay attention to these. We need to pay attention in the interests of social justice and making sure that no student is disadvantaged through no fault of their own. Teachers are aware that students come with different educational experiences and they come from families with different levels of wealth and resource. The students have different familiarity with the English language and due to their backgrounds and perhaps some cultural differences, they have different levels of confidence in the social groups they get put into in medical college. And so a student who appears in class to be withdrawn, unprepared, disengaged, we might well find if we inquire that that student um, can't afford a, lap a good laptop or a good smartphone to access online re resources, or that student is not w used to working in mixed gender groups, or perhaps he or she is sleeping badly due to coping with the new experience of living in hostel, or perhaps is failing to understand a lot of the lectures due to a poor level of English. This kind of understanding helps the teacher to offer the support that such a student needs to thrive and be successful. So now, with the situation of the past six months, it's even more important that we understand how such differences between students might affect the way they're managing to cope with online teaching. Let's use our imagination for a moment. Perhaps one of our students is the eldest daughter in her family and finds herself spending much of her study time helping mother with younger siblings. Perhaps another student has nowhere in his home to study quietly and in peace. Perhaps the signal is poor where they live, particularly in remote regions or poor or intermittent, and they find it difficult to listen to Zoom. And they will also, in that case, find it difficult to chat to fellow students 
and get that support uh, that students give each other so easily in a face-to-face -face meeting. So using my imagination like that leaves me with some questions that I really want to ask students. And these are the questions. Dr. Faha, would you like me to share these or just read them out? You can just read them out. Okay, fine. So these are my questions for you students. What is it that you have found most difficult about online learning? How easy do you find it to organize your time? Time to attend classes and do the follow-up study. And what hinders you or prevents you from organizing your time successfully? How easy is it for you to concentrate during online classes? Have you found any strategies to help you? How many hours of classes do you think you can concentrate for without getting too tired? And then keeping in contact with fellow students. Do you keep in contact with fellow students? How and how often? What sorts of things do you contact each other for? Social or work queries? How easy is this for you? And finally, are you aware of any students who are having particular difficulties with online classes? Or perhaps you yourself are having particular difficulties with online classes. What kinds of difficulties are these? Are they, are they difficulties that the institution that we could help you with? So those are my key questions to students. They're about your experiences. And I'm excitedly list, uh, waiting to hear about those experiences and wondering what we can learn from them. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Janet, uh, for giving us a direction for a discussion and a bigger picture to keep in mind for our audience, moderators and panelists during the upcoming discussions. So while our next panelist, Dr. Uh, Zia Kayum, is, uh, ha is having some difficulty to join in, we'll take this opportunity to request Dr. Atsusi Harumi from University of California to say a few words about his vision on future of online education. Dr. Atsusi is a famous educationist who has huge work on online education. So Dr. Atsusi, we'll be very honored if you could share a few words with us. Thank you very much. Um, I was not expecting to be asked to speak. I was actually going to relax and listen today, but I'm not typically lost for words. So again, thank you, and I'm honored to be invited here today. I'm so excited to see faculty actually wanting to listen to students. I've been an instructional designer and a faculty member for 30 plus years. I've taught high school. I've trained many people in different companies and organizations, and it's interesting to see how some people are interested in listening to the students and how others are not. And although the students are not necessarily experts in the content, they are expert consumers. And I think that's what they have, people have to understand. They know what they like, they know what they don't like, they know what helps and they don't, what does not help given their current situation. So we're all wired and and we were born to survive. That's what we know from neuroscience is all human beings are, are wired and their brains are wired to survive. So I think it's critical that we always listen to our students to find out better ways of teaching and learning. Um, the other main point I'd like to make about the future, it, it's not necessarily the technology in my opinion that is the difference, I think technology does influence how people learn, but we know from 30, 50 years of research, it's the design of instruction that affects the students' reactions and their learning. So if I designed a really, really good self-instructional print-based 
unit of instruction like 50 years ago when we had distance education. Students uh, will learn better and will like it better than a really poorly designed 3D immersive game. So I always like to remind people that no matter what you think the future is, data analytics, learning platforms, ecosystems, and again, I believe and utilize many of these technologies, but fundamentally you have to understand that how well you design and what you do before, during, and after the use of these types of technologies are essential to student learning. So if I had to make just one thing that I wanted to improve the quality of e-learning and distance ed and education in general around the world, it would be making sure that there's an alignment between the three fundamental elements, the objectives, the content, and the assessment. And that's what I teach and preach and tell everyone um, is the fundamentals to making sure people learn is if your objective is the students will list 50 states, the assessment should list 50 states and the content should give them practice at listing 50 states. And it seems so basic and so elemental, but I find that it does not happen very often, you know, especially in medical schools where you have lots of experts teaching, they think, oh, the students must know everything. So they get inundated content and the lack, this alignment is lacking. So I would just like to encourage people to think about what is the fundamentals of teaching and learning as you look into the future, as well as listen to what students are saying. So thank you for this moment. Uh, I hope, um, I wish everyone well, and I'm excited about being here. I do have one study that I am preparing for the future. It's a multi-institutional study on the use of formal and informal curriculum resources. And um, I've talked to Dr. Islam about that, and I hope we could get medical schools across Pakistan to participate in the study, because again, from the students' perspective and faculty, we need to learn how they utilize these resources to help learning. So thank you, and um, best wishes from Florida. Thank you so much, Dr. Susi. We hope you stay here for the breakout room session to start. And now after your talk, we have Vice Chancellor of the Alam Biology, Dr. Zia Kayoum. Uh, Dr. Zia Kayoum is Vice Chancellor of a university which is very renowned for distance education. So uh, Dr. Bakas, can you please uh, unmute Dr. Zia Kayoum? And let's welcome Dr. Zia. Uh, yes, he can unmute himself. Sit, unmute him, Dr. Shabakas. Dr. Zeul Kayum. I think there is some technical difficulty. He is not here, probably. Okay. So, so we can proceed okay. with the breakout rooms. Yeah, now. yeah, we can pr proceed with breakout rooms now. And um, this is actually the most exciting part of this webinar. So let me share with you brief detail that even before uh, the webinar started yesterday and last night, students from all participating colleges discussed many aspects of online learning on specially made WhatsApp groups. This exercise itself was very useful and thought provoking for all students to interact with other students of other colleges from all over Pakistan. So now we will now randomly place you in, uh, you in different rooms where you can interact with medical students from all participating colleges. Audience, you can write your questions in the chat box and our moderators will direct these questions to students' panelists. And focus of questions during the first 20 minutes will be online curriculum delivery. After 20 minutes, you will automatically be taken to another room where you can discuss online assessments with a different set of students' panelists. It might take us one minute for this shifting, to, uh, so just be patient for this one minute. Uh, in the health uh, profession, of Pakistan. I would like to introduce all, all the students one by one. We have almost 11 students with us. Kassan Toki is 
first year student from Aga Khan University, Karachi. Sayeda uh, Hassan, can you say, can you, are yeah, you here? Yes. Sayeda Arshia Zahra is the second year student from Dao Medical University, Karachi. Assalamualaikum. Walaikum assalam. Sayeda uh, Arshia, you are the only one representing from the public universe, public sector yes. medical mm -hmm. university. Rest of the panelists all are from private sector universities. Yasir Bilal is the third year student of Shalamar Medical and Dental College, Lahore. Yasir is with us. Okay. Then Fahad Rahman and Ali Bangash are from Shifa College of Medicine, Shifa Tamir Millat University. Muneeb Shahib uh, is the senior most student, he's the final year student of Ziauddin University, Medical University, Karachi. Muneeb, you are here. Uh, can you hear me and, uh, and can you see me? Then next one is Natasha Nadim and Sara Arif. They are from CMH uh, Lahore Medical College. Maria Saqib is the fourth year student of Peshawar Medical College. Muhammad Jalal Awan and Zainab Ansar are the first year students of Kar Karachi Institute of Medical Sciences. And thank you all for being here this afternoon. I have outlined few questions uh, regarding the online curriculum uh, delivery of curriculum. Uh, in the meanwhile, the participants will be asking their questions uh, through the chat box. So my first question goes to the Arshia. Arshia, can you tell us about your experience of online learning very briefly? Um, yes, um, thank you for inviting me and for letting me talk about this. Um, to start with, I'd just like to say that while we will discuss the challenges of curriculum delivery later on, um, again, obviously curriculum delivery wasn't ideal, but I think it's important to remember that um, this situation isn't ideal either for okay. the first person. Um, thank you for having me. All right. So uh, what happened was that um, since online examination, since online classes started, obviously there was a lag for a few weeks before the starting of online classes. And as this, this lag of a few weeks did uh, decrease the motivation of students a bit. So uh, we started, I started, uh, I felt that um, there was a bit of lag. So I started preparing for the online sessions a bit late. There was a lot of um, things that were happening. Obviously, there are a lot of emotional um, situations that are involved. Okay, so in the um, household we did face many problems and challenges. And the top most problem was obviously of connectivity. Like um, I didn't have any connectivity issue, but many of my friends who belong to remote areas, they had major connectivity issues. Then secondly, I feel um, that the IT department of the college should have been more trained, uh, more responsive. Uh, um, being in the like, same college, we obviously had these exact same issues. And I think the best way that we were able to deal with it is that we kind of had really open communication with the class. And I think this was a collective effort from our class's side, which is that we would always communicate all the issues to the departments. And they would kind of have an open attitude towards actually listening to them and seeing that they were resolved. And I think that the biggest factor in this is um, giving students the benefit of the doubt because right, I feel so like I think so um, that e-learning is a really good, good method of teaching and and the main reason for that is that it is really efficient and it's really easy for both the students as well as the teachers when and moreover uh, I think so that the most beneficial method of e-learning is through uh, pictorial presentations and pictorial presentations is uh, something that isn't even focused during clinical uh, rounds. In, in our college, we so, had uh, our uh, online classes relatively earlier than other colleges. Two weeks into the lockdown, our online classes had started. 
and uh, they were mostly pre-recorded lectures. We didn't have live sessions at first, so internet connectivity wasn't much of an issue then. Shabash. Um, alaikum everyone. My name is Ahan. I'm a second year student from Ahan University. Welcome on board, Bita. Uh, do, do we have a student from CMH Lahore? No. Do we have a student from Dow Medical University? Yes, Dow Medical College. Please, Bita, introduce your name. Assalamu alaikum everyone. I'm Muhammad Kamran and I'm a student of third year. MBBS at Dow Medical College, Karachi. Thank you, Vita. Uh, we do you we have a student from Islamic International Medical College? Uh, Assalamu alaikum, ma'am. Uh, I am Kazi Muhammad Sevgatullah, final year medical student from Islamic International Medical College, Rifa University. Welcome on board, Vita. Thank you, Vita. Do we have a student from uh, Peshawar Medical College? No. Okay, from Shalamar Medical College. No. Shifa College of Medicine. Assalamu alaikum. I am Bisma Shweb and I am from Shifa College of Medicine. Uh, which year of Peter? Medical? Second year. Second year. Welcome, Peter. Thank you. Bisma. Uh, do we have Asif as well from first year from Shifa? No. And what about Ziauddin University? No. So, how many students we have? One, uh, two, three, four, four students we have. Okay, let's start the discussion. Bismillah uh, ar First question is about the curriculum de delivery. Uh, I think at Islamic International Medical College, at Shifa College of Medicine, and Aga Khan University, these colleges are following the integrated uh, medical curriculum. You all know that outcome-based, integrated, spiral, and modular system. So, uh, what are your feeling, internal feeling about uh, this co in the COVID era? There was a paradigm shift. There was a shift from the face-to-face -face learn teaching and learning to your online learning. So, what are your internal feeling? Uh, one by one, you can share. Uh, we can start from the Shifa College of Medicine. Ji, assalamualaikum. I hope I'm audible to everyone right now. Yes, yes, please, yes. Um, I think it is an already established fact that online learning um, is an unprecedented thing for all of us in Pakistan, especially. But in times of a pandemic, if you think about it, we've been home for six months, but all our curriculum is delivered. We have had our exams as well, so nothing had stopped our education. It was a setback at, uh, at first, but we worked through it. Uh, we did, the faculty did, but now it has become a system that we've adapted to. So, and uh, that just shows like Bisma mentioned, obviously at the start, uh, when the pandemic hit, it was pretty surprising for all of us. And there were a few days off, but Alhamdulillah, we were pretty adaptive as well. We switched to an online system. And since those, I'd say three to four days off we had, we've Alhamdulillah continued our education. From that point on, uh, yes, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, just like both of them said, ke start mein hume difficulty hui thi. initially first two weeks, hume humara off tha. then we keep uh, improving uh, in online education, and overall, uh, our experience was really uh, satisfactory. Already, just uh, Pakistan, ne bola, I would agree to that. In the first initial few days, there was a setback. Technical issues, the teachers be familiarized with the Zoom se or baki online platform. Se. Similarly, students can say be a tha. But however, with improvisations, we got familiarized with Zoom platform. And I feel my. And before we start further, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, I am Dr. Samrina Mansoor, working as a professor of biochemistry at. Shifa College of Medicine and along with me the Dr. Gulshan she is a professor of gynecology and obstetrics and students which are now with us I would like to introduce within one or two minutes uh, I think Akash Kumar is uh, he's a student of third year from Aga Khan University Pakistan he is with us Sarosh Ahmed Siddiqui uh, fourth year student he is from the Daw Medical University Tayyeba Arshad, final year student from Shif, uh, Shalimar College, uh, Medical College. Ari Abira Kazmi, first year medical student from Shifa College of Medicine. 
Mehmood Abbas, he is a third year student from Shifa College of Medicine. Faraz, he is a stu second year stu medical student from Shifa College of Medicine. And Tuba is first year medical student from Ziauddin Medical University, Karachi. And Batul is first year medical student from CMH Lahore Medical College. And Sumaya is a fourth year medical student from Peshawar Medical Answer. College. A reply the, are you satisfied with the curriculum or e-learning curriculum which is so far delivered in the COVID era? Uh, Assalamualaikum everyone. Um, in terms of satisfaction, um, because it was being taught by a generation, nearly 75% of our teachers were people who do not, did not grow up with the technology that we grew up with. So in terms of satisfaction, how much they put effort into it, yes, I would be completely satisfied. But in terms of the resources we had, no, because we come from a country which does not have Wi-Fi or internet access. As she said, in, that in terms of the delivery methods and all that, our teachers tried their best. And I think most of the obstacles that we faced were uh, more like on personal basis, as she said, like, there were internet problems, there's uh, concentration issues and understanding concepts is different for everybody. So those issues aside, uh, the efforts that were made by the faculty and uh, creating all these different systems for delivering the lectures, the recorded lectures and all that, that was, um, that was very uh, satisfactory on their part. Okay, so Dr. Samina, the question that you asked was regarding the curriculum. So like as uh, the other two people uh, mentioned before that uh, the efforts of the teacher that they are putting in to deliver stuff is uh, like commendable because they haven't really grown up with the technology. But the main problem that uh, what the students of Dow Medical College specifically face was that curriculum is, uh, I would say it's a bit outdated. Like uh, outdated in a sense that uh, like uh, like the sources that we study for our board exams, like boards and beyond, uh, MLE ki any sources, uh, Kaplan. So, in that, kya kehte hai, uh, sources, jo hota hai, usme, like, precise ja hota. There, uh, there are some people in, in the student body that, that will, that will see some things as strengths and some things as weaknesses. So, like, if, if we talk about, um, uh, the good aspects in terms of overall, like, uh, uh, good aspects. They, we can see that every uh, lecture that was given to us was recorded, and and there are uh, some some students who who live in the uh, remote areas of Pakistan who who were not able to attend those uh, live sessions because of connectivity issues. Uh, for them, uh, uh, every single rec lecture was recorded. So, let's say if they were not able to attend the live sessions, they were able to uh, watch them later on when they did have. Uh, um, the connectivity for internet and, and they didn't have any power uh, yeah. power outages. Yeah. If, and, and if I could add on it, please. Thank you. Doctor Susi, sorry, Doctor Susi, yeah, yeah, sure. question chat. Me, uh, Faraz, aap dekh okay. Sure, ma'am. Sure. All right. Uh, thank you so much uh, for letting me speak on this. All right. So the thing is, uh, when speaking about myself, I'm a hospitalite, and uh, in this pandemic, on March, I went back home to Oman because that's where I live. So what I really felt was that generally before, when I was in the hostel, I had limited time because uh, I have a roommate in Shifa, we have roommates, as in I have a single roommate, but we have shared rooms. So what happened was that it was very difficult for me to actually focus in my room. If I was doing something at like particular time, for example, at four o'clock, my roommate would just come in randomly from his rotations or something else, and that would kind of disrupt my environment. Plus, we have other batchmates, other hostelites who live in the same place. And sometimes other people have problems and they just come up to your room and randomly, you know, just talk. So because of that, that disrupted my environment to study in the hostel. Then I would go to the library. The library was a place where I could focus, but the traveling time and the travel, the distance that I traveled, that basically yes, disrupted my routine. Can I add on this question? So when, when I was back home, at home. Yeah. All right. As um, Dr. Ducey just asked us about the resources, commercial learning resources, such as boards and beyond and you will um, actually I'm in third year and I had, a, we were a group of eight who planned to start our steps preparation from the day one of third year. And in the pandemic situation, when we were stuck at home, we had to study over here at home. Um, to me, the commercial resources are actually wonderful. Com uh, I take some big names like Anki, uh, Boards and Beyond, Kaplan, uh, Pathoma series by Dr. Sitar, and like they're amazing for understanding 
best and starting from captain series so there is an app um, called 3d atlas uh, which was used by our anatomy teachers to uh, help to teach us the practical aspects of anatomy and i think that really helped us rather than the models that uh, we used in our university in our practical labs and it helps us to uh, you know visualize it in a more deeper way if you can ask them thank you very much I okay. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, everybody, and I have a uh, very good evening to everybody. Uh, we can start with uh, first year Tuba from your comments. Uh, during this COVID era, you had online uh, assessments. First of all, can you uh, discuss which assessments were carried out in your university and how did you feel about them? Anxieties, any good things, any bad things, and then I would like everybody should continue and share their experiences in their colleges. Okay. Let's start off with Tuba. So, Miss, uh, we did had our uh, CATs for module one because then the pan then the pandemic situation was started. So, for module two, we had assignments, and uh, we didn't had any assignment or CAT examination for module three. And then we had a final uh, semester exams like for our first data? semester. Yes, so there was um, a BCQ exam. We used to have ACQ type of questions. The teachers used to upload the assignment on our LMS portal. And then we uh, used to uh, do the assignment on papers, uh, on the sheets. Then we used to uh, use the cam scammer application. We used to uh, convert it into the PDF form and then upload the assignment. Okay. So uh, basically, uh, we, we had our own LMS, and on that LMS, uh, because an almost eighty-six percent of our course was already completed in fourth year. And when we went off in fifteenth March, uh, we had very less amount of course. Only our uh, CNS module was left entirely. So we were assessed in that, and we had an I stage and also an ENT and just an I stage. It was all MCQs based, and it was uploaded at a certain time. Yeah, in Shalimar Institute, there is a special app designed model app for our assessment and on which our lectures are uploaded and the assignments we will post on that app. So most effective tool which is selected for the assessment is MCQ, and the time is very limited, approximately 45 MCQs and 45 minutes. The best thing they did so that there will be less chances to that students use the helping tools is that there is no back option. We are just like. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, today we are going Okay, uh, okay. Uh, I welcome you all uh, in the room four. Uh, I am Dr. Ifra Ashraf, uh, assistant professor from the Department of Physiology, Munshipa College of Medicine. Uh, I would like to introduce a uh, panelist of our room. Uh, consists of um, Mr. Hassan Kamal from uh, Aga Khan University, uh, Muhammad Junaid from Daw, Sania Mirza from Shalimar, Fatima Shahriyar from Shifa College of Medicine, Hamza Ali from Shifa, uh, Rimza Hamid, Emal from uh, CMH, Mariam from Peshawar Medical College, Roshan Ahmed. Yes. Uh, in this uh, session, we will discuss about the uh, students' perceptive, perspective on challenges and opportunity they face during e-learning. So I would like to um, start with the questions that uh, from the panelists that what do you what you have faced most sure. difficult about uh, online learning during, student, uh, uh, we started uh, doing clinical years from third year so we are uh, rotating in different departments so at the time of uh, suspension of uh, rotations i was in my doing my uh, pulmonology rotation so to suddenly stop from going to rounds and just to face a different whole different scenario where we are just having lectures online on teams it's a huge uh, difference, a huge contrast to what we used to have. Okay, so I'd like to second Hassan on that phenomena because I think the most difficult thing about medical education in general is the fact that it's supposed to be hands-on learning. So, um, as far as fourth and final year and third year students are concerned, they go to clerkships and rotations. You know, it's a whole different dimension. So, 
I'm a first uh, year, so it was really hard for me to adjust, especially to online learning, because we only had uh, classes like in-person classes for a month before quarantine started, and then it would just shifted entirely to that, and we had so many important modules like the cardiovascular system entirely online without any practicals, which I feel is like. Pretty hard to adjust to, especially yes, in these I times. Yes, I think it was very effective for us. Okay, so uh, we have had pre-recorded lectures, and um, so, uh, for concepts that were difficult to grasp, we could watch them again, and we could watch them at our own ease and uh, set an environment for us without distraction. So that was Is very sure, helpful. Sure. मैम देखें सबसे पहले तो एज अ फाइनल ईयर स्टूडेंट जो आप पेस की बात करेंगे तो मैम आज प्रॉबेबली आज हमारी टोटल लाइन से फाइव क्लासेस थी साढ़े आठ से साढ़े नौ साढ़े नौ से साढ़े दस इसी लाइन से साढ़े दस से साढ़े ग्यारह फिर साढ़े ग्यारह से साढ़े बारह और बाद बार दफा छः भी होती हैं पाँच मैं जो बता रहा हूँ आपको लिस्ट बता रहा हूँ पहली बात ही और मैम आपने जो पहला सवाल ये पूछा था कि हैंड्स ऑन वाली बात तो मैम फोर्थ ईयर थर्ड ईयर सेकेंड ईयर फर्स्ट ईयर मैम मेरी नजर में सेकेंड ईयर फर्स्ट ईयर का डिफरेंट ओपिनियन होगा थर्ड ईयर और फोर्थ ईयर का एक मर्ज ओपिनियन होगा लेकिन मैम एज अ फाइनल ईयर स्टूडेंट हम Uh, suddenly you have to get it online so we'll start from delay final year students uh bete aapko kaisa laga how do you find it this online assessment because most of the things we see on uh, on a final year students that we need to get skills assessment and those are very hard to take online so what's your opinion about online assessment Ma'am, I'm sorry. I could, I cannot put my opinion forward in this case because we, um, हमारे जो है ना अभी तक कोई भी किसी किस्म के भी online assessment नहीं हुए हैं. अच्छा. ठीक है. ना theoretically, ना ही कोई practically like कुछ भी नहीं. ठीक है. तो मैम हमें मुझे like as a final year student मुझे इस online assessment का कुछ idea नहीं. Yes. Yes. Uh, so um, we also didn't have a summative assessment. We had small formative assessments like how Hamza mentioned for his Ghani rotation. We had a very similar structure followed for our pediatric rotation, uh, where they would have a pre-test at the beginning of the week, and then it was followed by a lecture at the mid-week, and then a post-test uh, at the end of the week on Friday. So, and those it used to be a, like small MPQs, 15 or 20 questions, and we had our own portal, V L E, where we used to uh, have these yeah. MPQs there. Cheating. Uh, so, um, Unfairness. Well, Oh. All right. So there are there are some ways to go about this a particular phenomena, especially when um, uh, because it's no. It's I, I mean very honestly speaking, there will always be students. So. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. I'm Dr. Sadaf Majid, and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Physiology at Shifa College of Medicine. and i welcome you all to the breakout room rotation 1 and before starting the discussion uh, i'll be introducing uh, you with our student panelists and my co moderator my co moderator will be uh, dr arshad sir please unmute your mic and uh, give your brief introduction assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh I'm Dr. Ashish Dalit, and I teach anatomy at Shifa College of Medicine to first and second years. I've been around in this college for more than 13 years, and all the best. Let's have a good discussion. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now let me introduce you uh, with the student panelists. And as I call your names, I would uh, request the students to uh, quickly unmute your mic and say hello or salam alaikum to all the uh, to the audience, so that we can save our time for uh, the discussion. So we have uh, Muhammad Ali uh, from Year Five, Aachan University. Hello, I'm Muhammad Ali. I'm a final year student from the Aachan University. Thank you for the introduction, Dr. Salaf. Thank you. Ali uh, we have Abresh Ali from Dow Medical College year 1 Do we have Abresh here Okay let's move on to the next student we have Muhammad Fahad Shah from Shalamar Medical College Lahore year 
السلام علیکم آئی ایم محمد فہد فرام شالما میڈیکل کالج اینڈ تھینکس Thank you. So uh, this was a brief introduction of the uh, student panelists and uh, uh, you are all welcome. The audience is welcome to uh, write down your questions in the chat box and I'll be forwarding your questions uh, to the student panelists. And uh, just to remind you, uh, the first rotation uh, in the first rotation will be taking the questions regarding curriculum delivery. And in the second rotation, we'll be taking question about the assessment. So you can um, uh, write down your questions in the chat box. And meanwhile, um, meanwhile, I'll be starting with uh, Noor Fatma. Uh, she's a student, first year student at Shippa College of Medicine. Uh, Noor, can you share your experience with us? Uh, how did this online system uh, help you as a first year student and how effective did you find it uh, in context with your learning? Yeah, okay. So, so first of all, as I'm a first year student, I was in Shifa for about like on campus studying. I was in Shifa for about two months. And um, I, I feel like honestly, everyone's experiences are different. They're given different opportunities as we talked yesterday. So, you know, my experience, uh, Alhamdulillah, has been very good um, because, because of everything I've been given. But still, like, I, I feel like on my part, I got a lot of time in this online system that, that, that helped me explore so much. You know, so many, I, I used to go, I used to go to these um, suggestions and, you know, like all these different ways of studying. And um, I feel like since I was able to explore my way of studying, that really helped me get the grip of how I'm going to study medical from now on. So, uh, as being a final year medical student, um, everybody knows that a final year medical student is supposed to be in the world and they're supposed to, you know, write the histories and take physicals of like, you know, like beds. Um, so it, for us, it was like really difficult to kind of like uh, prepare all these cases virtually because we were given virtual cases. So we found it really hard because our clinical rotations, they were replaced by online learning. And, you know, that's like really hard for, for you to learn a clinical, uh, for you to be in a clinical practice and for you to learn on actual patients. Thank you very much. Um... In order to shed light on that, I believe that we should consider a few things. The first one being that, owing to the fact that none of them have uh, been through this tech evolution that sort of us have, uh, being a younger generation, I think that there were some um, discrepancies as far as their tech savviness was concerned, which, again, I don't blame anyone for because it's only natural. Um, if the so it took me a while to adjust to the new online system. Mm, uh, being a first year medical student, uh, it was quite hard for me. And uh, I'm more uh, of a person who likes human interaction and I'm really social. I need friends. I need teachers to talk to me face to face rather than teaching me online without any videos or anything. So it took me a little while to constantly create as well. Thank you. So 
So there were a couple of aspects to it. Uh, apart from what the college was formally delivering, uh, there the societies within the college had this entire informal sort of curriculum built up. Uh, and what we were doing was uh, we had these different societies who had their own parallel extracurricular courses being run. So they were one of the aspects that students would engage in, and, and I personally benefited from it. And I was also part of some of the societies which organized them. So this was one of the aspects of learning, which was a bit different from what the college actually uh, provided traditionally. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Kamyar Khan. I am a student of fourth year MBS, and I belong to Karachi Institute of Medical Sciences. But today, I want to use this platform to represent my province. As I am representing my province, it was miserable for us, for all of us, because e-learning depends upon two things: one, internet connectivity, and second. devices like mobile laptop internet connectivity depends on two things 3g 4g or the ptcl internet which is provided by pakistan government and everyone knows what is the condition of ptcl last night when i was I was trying to talk to the the mentors or the this group mediators i didn't had 3g 4g in this whole region 3g i we didn't Had three G four G. Okay, so um, regarding the face to face interaction, yes, I indeed this did miss that. But um, to compensate for that, my friends and I, we would uh, you know hold a kind of daily SGDs for the topics we studied, and that way we could actually revise what we studied for the day, and also meet each other. Uh, on a virtual uh, platform. As far as my concern, I really uh, enjoyed the online classes. Uh, at the initial stages during the pandemic, uh, that uh, it was a bit difficult for me uh, to continue the online classes as uh, the assessments, the online lectures, uh, and the uh, assignments burden uh, are put on on our uh, shoulders. Oh, uh, so, I'm uh, sorry. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. So it's good to hear so many things and so many comments. and i'm glad you're speaking out your mind it's your show so i'm going to talk about online assessment now this is a topic which of course students don't like uh, they're not it's not it's a very thorny subject so uh, i'll start off by asking the same question to all of you and it will be a simple answer it will be a yes or no answer so we can start off uh, the question is uh, were you comfortable with online assessment okay let's have a yes or no answer and then we can take it from here hania were you comfortable with online assessments yes um, or no? no no you were not okay same question to nufat bhai were you comfortable with online assessments yes or no simple yes, we we'll ask for reasons later I'm, sorry yeah Yeah, you were? Yes, sir. I was comfortable. Fine. Uh, yes, Muhammad Ali from Aghan University. Now you're a final year student. I think you would be sort of, you know, more objective about this. I know. Uh, so, were you comfortable with the online assessments? We'll not. We'll not talk about modalities. Over a very comfortable. Sorry. So yes. You were comfortable. You asked about the assessment component specifically, right? Uh, yes, we'll ask about the components later on. This is yeah. your overall assessment. Were you comfortable with it? Okay. Yes, eventually okay. we were comfortable with online assessments. Initially, there were some hiccups, but we uh, had those formatives after which we were comfortable. All right. Uh, Arsim Sheikh, were you comfortable with online assessment? Yes, sir. Was. You were. Uh, Moise, were you? Yes or no? No, sir. I'm afraid I was. Oh, no, you were no. Fine. Perfectly fine. Okay, we are just having opinions. Uh, Muhammad Fahad Shalimar, were you uh, comfortable? Yes. yes. Yes, sir. I am comfortable with it. You were comfortable. Okay. Uh, Kamyar, can you answer? Were you comfortable? You, of course, you had all those difficulties commuting around. But what about the taking this assessment? Were you comfortable during the assessment? Kamyar, can you hear me? Okay. Fine. Now we don't have some pointed questions, okay? 
Fine. So let's ask uh, Umaima. Uh, did the assessment correlate with the content delivered or the learning objectives given to you? Did it correlate with that? Yes, sir. It was. Uh, it was. It did much correlate. Yeah. It did correlate. Fine. So, anyone else would like to comment on it? Anybody who would who disagrees with it? Anybody who had a I, different experience? I disagree with this because we had a lot of uh, material to study from, and there was a lot to understand. And it was just our first month, so we didn't really know how to uh, study and what to study properly. So, we I wasn't sure if it was context-wise or it was out of the context. Uh, I think it pretty much remained the same as it was uh, before, uh, like before COVID and before online assessments, because learning is um, a two-way thing, and we just cannot uh, bring examinations and you know generalize our learning based on one aspect. So I uh, think so. I agree. Uh, uh, it did improve our uh, understanding of things. So assessments, anyway, would definitely contribute towards our understanding. Even in normal times, whenever we have an exam coming up, we do prepare for that. Uh, so the way things are structured over here is we do have those discussion sessions, which are moderated. So we have so every time we have those sessions and we know that we'll have a faculty moderating uh, us. In terms like of the online exam, assessment, the one thing that really kind of um, disgusted me about my own class fellows was the fact that no one could stop you from cheating on an online exam. No oh, one no. could stop you from um, uh, opening another tab on Google Chrome and uh, looking up the answers. Discuss cases in the uh, university in our on, uh, and as well as in our online classes. So those sessions were online for us uh, and just do, uh, those sessions. Uh, and the rest of the lectures, we'd get uh, pre-recorded lectures and I found it very useful because I make notes. And so I would just uh, pause the lecture and uh, make notes uh, as uh, writing takes a lot of time. Uh, thank you very much, all the students. But now I would like to hear from the student representative from Dow Medical, Medical College. College. I would like to add, I would like to add some uh, points that, yeah, that as uh, we had our online classes, we had approximately 300 to 400 students in a single class, in a one hour class. So what I think that um, for a teacher in uh, in a single hour is very difficult to communicate with with such massive uh, number of okay. students. So, so you basically uh, uh, sorry for interruption, uh, but there's a question from Malaysia. It's to, from Dr. Turaya Khan. I don't know how to pronounce it, but he has a very valid question. Uh, he said, "Ask this from the students: How easy do you organize your time attending classes?" And what are the hindrances, main hindrances in your time management? Okay, like so um, and nobody sure. has answered my first question yet. How long should be the online lecture in which you don't okay. lose your attention span? So uh, I'll answer both uh, in two different parts. So the first one, how long should it be? So. Um, uh, for AQ, uh, Al Khan University, what we did, uh, AQ had done was there was um, different types of lectures, and all the lectures that we had, they were recorded after, uh, while they were happening. So they happened live, and the entirety of it was recorded, and we had a Moodle on which they were put up, so we could go back and listen to them. So and Aves, can you please comment upon your views about assessment? How you found about online assessment? Oh, ma'am, uh, the thing is, I am, uh, my name is Sayyid Dwey Salisha, I am a uh, final year MBBS student, Peshawar Medical College. Uh, everyone uh, discussed uh, his issue, but my experience, uh, I, am a, I am in a hostel now also. But, uh, as a hostelite, there are a lot of difficulties when you go to home and you can't study properly just like you are in a hostel. You discuss things with your friends and you examine and uh, you do all the things which related to your course and discuss it with your friends. So in whom everyone was relaxed and uh, it was now in about six months, uh, the pandemic, first two months we were so relaxed that we were not uh, even, uh, I myself was relaxed and uh, I was so stressed uh, just because of pandemic and relaxed in a way of study. 
the tie was not easy we are continuously trying to learn something from lectures or from some uh, videos provided as us astra explained very well the teaching methodology used in her college and fiza said the online lectures what would you recommend face face to face teaching and learning or online brief answer uh, for every student i um, would i start. would prefer face to face teaching over online okay. i and i guess my classmates as well the okay. whole batch this is the opinion face of face. Yeah. face to face yeah face to face is a better option if have if we have the availability of face to face teaching face to face i would go for this. um but i think is that we can um in terms of lectures and uh, pre recorded lectures we can have face to face teaching but as long as uh, we are concerned with practicals and um, the clinical skills i think it's best to uh, like learn them live in our universities but lectures i i prefer pre recorded lectures because we can easily make notes of them and we won't have to appear uh, that uh, lose our attention at some point in time um, assalamu alaikum to add to that i have a slightly different opinion so i think everyone in general would prefer face to face <laughs> learning in for clinical skills for labs once the pandemic is over and if the situation allows but i actually do think that universities can utilize online learning in the future as well Uh, assalamu alaikum good afternoon everyone and a very good morning to some of you out there uh, in some parts of the world thank you for taking your time out and joining us for today's webinar my name is dr abida shaheen and i am professor of pharmacology at shifa college of medicine possible so so now without further ado let's wel welcome our panelist students and so first of all if i start from first year medical students zoha can you please unmute yourself and give a brief okay. introduction of yours Yes so my name is Zoha Asghar and I'm from Zaudin University in Karachi I'm in second year nice uh Moiz here you go assalamu alaikum my name is Moiz Tariq I am a student of Dow Medical College from second year okay Hamza Khan I guess Hamza Khan is not with us Asad Jamil he is also not with us and then Kasim Kasim, if you are yes, yes. Assalamu alaikum. I am Muhammad Kasim from Peshawar Medical College, a student of third year MBBS. Thank you for joining us, Kasim. And now Nisma Khan. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Nisma Khan, and I'm from Shifa College of Medicine, Islamabad, third year. Okay, and now Samin Tariq. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. I am Samin Tariq from Shalamar Medical and Dental College, uh, fourth year. Okay, thank you. And uh, now Nisma Javed. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. I am Nisma Javed, a student of final year at Shifa College of Medicine, Islamabad. Okay, and Muhammad Zafar. Zafar. Um, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Thank you for having me. I am uh, Muhammad Zafar, the first final year medical student at the Alkan University, Karachi. Thank you, Zafar, for joining us. We are so excited to hear from you your perspectives. So, uh, just a little reminder: uh, I am asking my audience to please type their questions into the chat box. Uh, meanwhile, we will start the discussion. Uh, so, the first question I am um, uh, I, I'll ask from Zafar, who is from Maher Medical University. Zafar, just in brief two minutes, please share your thoughts about learning in online environment. And what did you like most about learning uh, uh, about online learning from a student perspective? And what was your biggest concern in all these six months? So can you share your thoughts? I think yes. Thank you, Doctor um, Abda, for this question. I think the biggest pro for this entire experience was that it it really opened our eyes to how um, quickly the the human being can adapt to such a huge change. Like this pandemic was thrown thrown at us in in about. Feb and Feb March, right? And somehow the universities were able to completely transform their teaching um, systems to an online one and a remote so virtual one. So that's to you know um, make a schedule for yourself when you're sitting at home and you don't have to go outside. So um, from my own experience, it was quite hard to make a schedule because I was. Uh, constantly changing my routine from like staying up late at night for studying or waking up in the morning 
for the classes as you uh, you know that the classes didn't start immediately as the lockdown was there so the classes started after a month or so so everyone's routine was already quite messed up at that time so it did uh, presented with quite a challenge to fix our routine yes. back in um, yes thank you dr abda and um to uh, Uh, Doctor Jaya, who asked this question. So basically, anatomy, as we know, that it is such an important uh, basic science sub uh, science subject. And um, in second year, most of our modules were so uh, anatomy intense. Um, I feel like that was a huge challenge for so ourselves as well. In the starting, uh, uh, when we clouded out from the uh, uh, on campus lear learning and we uh, went to the online teaching system, in initially there were very difficulties we faced. because uh, never the less the classroom environment we didn't have it thank you so uh, much for that question so um throughout our rotations in final year we came across a couple of tools we use zoom we used um google meet we even used google classroom we used gmails for communication and we even used whatsapp thank you dr abida for, for letting me speak uh first of all i would say that uh, in our third year we had pre recorded lectures <clears throat> so we could easily uh uh learn from online lectures uh from any time of the day whenever we had uh the internet available but uh, uh, and i know personally many students which uh, go through from that phase and it is very difficult for them as well as well uh, so uh, college has managed some of that students and uh, respectively so now other issue communication gap so that was there because we have not uh, we don't have our uh, um, our classes on the zoom we have our classes on the webinar i want to add on this uh, point uh, that you say yes. that we teachers uh, keep on their camera off and uh, would yes, it be effective please, please go on yes i think uh, i totally agree that it would be really much affect the focus of the student if they keep their camera off because uh, when the teachers see i can see the students then they can hopefully can be attend their session and uh, uh, listen their session as well so it is a Uh, first let me uh, introduce myself uh, first of all i would like to take the consent of everyone since we are going to record this thing so and uh, the uh, pre uh, also dr fahad has highlighted this in the beginning also so i am dr sajda and i am associate professor in community medicine at chopa college of medicine and i'll be moderating the first half of this uh, discussion and with me is dr muniza can you introduce yourself please Assalamu alaikum everyone I'm Dr Munita Amir Sami and I'm an assistant professor in the department of health professions education at Chifa College of Medicine Thank you Dr Munita uh, now I would like all our participants uh, thank uh, they have joined us from different colleges as Dr Fahad mentioned so uh, as I go about can we have the introduction of Danish first please uh, the your name the year of medical education undergraduate school that you are and the college that you belong to please Okay assalamu alaikum my name is Danish uh, I'm a final year medical college student from Aachen hospital Okay thank you uh, then we thank have you. Hasan Um uh, assalamu alaikum I'm Mohammad Hasan I'm a fourth year medical uh, college student at Dawa Medical College Okay thank you then Ariba Assalamu alaikum I'm first year student from Shalamar Medical and Dental College thank you Okay uh, thank you then Sayed Shahid Assalamu alaikum Uh, I'm a second year medical student from Shifa College of Medicine. Thank you, Sharuk. Uh, Assalamualaikum. Uh, I'm third year medical student from Shifa College of Medicine. Thank you, Maria. My name is Muhammad Sharuk. Name. Muhammad Sharuk. Okay. <laughs> Maria. Alright. Uh, Assalamualaikum. I'm Maria Khan. I'm a third year medical student from Jaldi University. Okay. Thank you, Fariha. Uh, Fariha has uh, not joined. Maybe uh, Maria, can you confirm? Uh, Fariha is not in our room, probably. Uh, she she had problems connecting. I think she's sorting them out. Right? Okay, let's see if she can join later. Then Kinza. Uh, Kinza is also not here yet. Mm -hmm. Then Fazal Amin. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Fazal Amin, and I am a second year student from Shah Mazgal College. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your introduction. Uh, so our first uh, part of the discussion that is about the 
uh, that is about the curriculum delivery like how was the experience if we generally talk about of the online teaching uh, that that was conducted to you the first time they were exposed to it so as a glossly how would you say something so we can start with uh, i think now we start with fazal now yeah miss is my voice clear yes very clear yes all right so miss as opposed to all different colleges uh, we did not have live sessions we had pre recorded lectures where the faculty members would record themselves uh, showcasing the slides Yes. and they would have their talk for uh, on an average of 4 to 50 minutes so much uh, all right um i sort of uh, i just pick up where uh, fazil left off that i do agree that um it was a bit of a culture shock not just for us the professors themselves since they're not used to um utilizing um online resources that involve e learning um so it took a bit of time for them as well as us to get used to it there were lots of glitches but um yeah, one thing that i uh, yeah so carrying forward uh, now presents a very different dynamic because obviously we have students uh, coming from all uh, social cultural backgrounds right and uh, it was good we also started online cl classes pretty soon uh, after covid but it was a cultural shock for our teachers as well uh, most of them were not used to uh they were not really tech savvy and uh, so i'm um, sure so i generally liked the experience but um now after uh, hasan mentioned that it is a privilege i do come to think that it really is a privilege i mean there was a great learning curve for everyone for the students for the faculty members even for the admin who tried to arrange everything as maria mentioned that if there were some technical difficulties uh, um, i want to add something for, uh, basically i belong to a remote area laya ticket and there is no such internet connection uh, good internet connection there so i found it quite difficult in managing my online classes um, ma'am <laughs> i just i think most of the points have been discussed mainly the thing that i'd like to add into it is that yeah we had our ups and downs and there were different backgrounds to students and uh, that resulted in different um, experiences Thank you very much, Dr. Sajda. So, moving on to the second round of discussion, as uh, Dr. Sajda has already mentioned, uh, would be about online assessment. So, we'll be asking the students about their experience of online ex assessment. Uh, maybe we can start from uh, Fazal. Could you please share your experience of online assessment, if you had? All any? right, Miss. So, online assessments we had just MCQs, and okay. they were. and they were staged after every two weeks so whatever material we cover in two weeks uh, we, we we were assessed on mcqs uh, based so, on that material so um in shafan second year we basically had two different types of uh, assessments in the past six months one was the summative module exams and the others were uh, formative exams just to see our knowledge and just to judge that so uh as if we talk about the summative exams the module exams it was basically done on shifa's own software it's on lms so i think uh, for the first time it was a uh, you'd say it was a good uh, website um, uh, uh, to be very honest i think it wasn't uh, an assessment for us it was an it was a group discussion and our university was also very smart to call it an open book test uh, just before the assessment uh so i mean we we had M mcqs time was not an issue for us uh but if we we mostly have a scenario based course so we did not really have any assessments um there was just one um formative assessment which was again an open book um okay um i am dr safina ahmed assistant professor pathology at shifa college of medicine and i will be uh, moderating this first session Uh, along with uh, me uh, we have panel of eight students from different medical colleges who are representing both public sector as well as private medical uh, institutes uh, do you think sharia that online learning uh, is comfortable and enjoyable and uh, uh, can it be uh, at par as uh, on campus curriculum delivery assalamu alaikum everyone again so uh, as ma'am said i would like to add about my views regarding the online experience so far so uh, when the pandemic began uh, started so uh, right at the beginning of the pandemic our online session start started 
so uh, uh, at the starting time we had faced many uh, issues be because it was a really new yeah, experience for all, almost question. all of us and we um, didn't yes, have yes absolutely uh, um i think there were a lot of problems uh, and it ranged from like different uh, people belonging to different backgrounds i consider myself a person who had a lot of um, like i was privileged enough to have like my backup wifi wifi and i had like personal space where i could study and attend classes every day but still i did have a lot of difficulties like uh, at two weeks back uh, we had heavy rainfalls in karachi and we just didn't have electricity we didn't have wifi uh, even though our university was kind enough to like postpone exams or postpone or uh, upload pre recorded lectures uh, they did consider it but still it was a hassle it was uh, uh, it gave a, it did give us anxiety because we couldn't attend lectures couldn't uh, attend classes they know what would happen uh, also couldn't communicate i would prefer like a combination of both uh, the pre pre recorded lectures should put up uh, uh, there should be interactive sessions and those sessions mm -hmm. should be recorded and they should be available for later use for example if someone has a power breakout and he mm -hmm. or she cannot listen or cannot attend or there is some emergency sort of situation or the internet is not working or he she misses some part of the lecture so it should be available for later uh, first of all well, thank you ma'am for asking me this i'd like to give my opinion briefly on this uh, so uh, alhamdulillah i was privileged enough to devote my time solely to studies uh, and uh, i think the best thing about uh, online teaching was teaching and learning was that we had sufficient time like it was yes, definitely we were all in contact with each other through whatsapp groups class group we have uh, we made different subject groups as well and all of our teachers were very supportive in it they posted study material and important questions past papers everything it was available to all the students through whatsapp okay, group um, so what's up thank you dr safina uh, now there's a uh, slight change in the uh, routine of the session that we're not going to go back to the main room and we're not going to uh, be divided into the rooms again we are going to start the discussion of our second topic in at this very moment okay right this is a slight change okay now there, that was a very healthy discussion on the online uh, delivery of the curriculum i am dr maryam habib and i am a moderator of your second session which is concerned with the opportunities and challenges faced in online assessments now i think we are all familiar with the participants and the audience is the same and the format is again the same you all have to write any questions that you feel are relevant to this topic okay assalam alaikum Uh, now uh, the, um, there is a question that how was your experience of online assessment? Was it the same as you used to give the uh, on-campus assessments, or was it any different in terms of apprehension or the anxiety levels? Uh, if Shahriar would answer me, Shahriar from first year, Shiva. Yes, ma'am. Uh, as far as our first experience was concerned, so uh, almost we had our six or uh, five or six modules online. but our uh, online assessment uh, pro process started after our 3 to 4 modules mm -hmm. so when when we are we were having our first module assessment so uh, it was uh, of respiratory mm -hmm. so it was very uh, again this was a very new experience for all of us and uh, almost all of our, our batch was in uh, was little bit in anxiety and when fear of the conditions and uh, along with that we were also having the uh, we were also fear of having a fear f fear of this that uh, anyone can face the pa power loss of condition okay. or basically um, at first it was uh, like this ke um, it was quite uh, apprehended that it is it may be getting difficult uh, but uh, then we got used to it but the point is there are certain loopholes in this uh, situation I am studying in a government medical college so um many people who study in this college don't exactly have backup wifi don't have wifi at all if they are living in remote places so it's very much an inconvenience for them to give an online exam and okay iman you want to share yes please yeah just one thing i think the uh, the time is also ending uh, just one thing i feel like with time everybody would agree with the fact that yeah. we grew uh, from day 1 to the last day right now i think abhi bhi ho rahe online classes but we grew i think the faculty grew the students grew uh
Yes, welcome back everyone. Uh, it will take one or two minutes for everyone to come back. Okay, so I think most of us are back in this room. I'm sure that, uh, one second, yes. I'm sure that you must have all had very productive sessions, which was basically supposed to be two different sessions. We wanted to place each one of you in two different rooms, but because of huge number of participants, it became quite difficult. So now I will request our second guest speaker, Vice Chancellor of Alama Iqbal Open University, Professor Dr. Ziaul Kayyum. Um, Alama Iqbal University has decades of experience of distance learning, so I'm sure he has a lot to say on this topic. Um, Rizia, uh, can you unmute yourself? Uh, thank, you, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Fahad. Um, and I hope I mean, everybody can listen to me. I mean, probably we, we have enough connectivity uh, to understand what I'll be going to say. Uh, Dr. Fahad, uh, should I uh, continue talking uh, whatever I want to say? Please continue, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so uh, good afternoon, everybody uh, from Alama Iqbal Open University. And probably I'm the only alien in this world of medical specialists, uh, a person who uh, wanted to be a doctor, but he never, uh, he, he could not. And I ended up uh, having a PhD in computing and uh, I'm in serving this community in, in, in this capacity of professor of computing, computing since last about 30 years or so. Um, I had interesting um, I'm in session during last maybe half an hour or so where uh, I probably anyway was forced to listen to whatever this, my students were saying, but it was very informative. And uh, at the same time, I could see, uh, I mean, the, the, the genuine concern of the students uh, uh, when, when it comes to really um, learning experiences and extent of learning, especially in the online world of education. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll talk briefly about what could be the solutions, but, and I wanted to say something else, but uh, I, mean, I would like to respond to uh, different queries of the students which they have raised. And I've been talking about, um, I mean, these things since last about three or four months or so at different forums um, when it comes to preparedness in the online world. Uh, I mean, I, I can briefly say that uh, uh, it was a kind of uh, situation where uh, we had to really dive in uh, into the online mode of education without much preparedness because we wanted to say, as institutions, we wanted to save the precious time of the students. So uh, the institutions then um, only switched to this online world using whatever means they had uh, available. For example, I, I know the institutions had been using Microsoft Teams. The institutions have been using uh, Google Classrooms or Google Meet, maybe, uh, and similarly, uh, very uh, honestly, I mean, I can give one statement very carefully, though. All of these three options can, uh, and to enable an online uh, or an open distance learning environment, you have to have a specifically designed learning management system. Uh, much of the concerns the students have shared uh, are primarily due to the fact that they were exposed to this world in an asynchronous mode. And uh, uh, I mean, uh, obviously the learning, learning experience cannot be that good when, when you are interacting with the people in an asynchronous mode. Um, if I share with you a brief, uh, uh, about Alam Iqbal Open University, which could serve as a case study for others. I mean, because I could see lots of medical schools are actually connected today uh, with uh, international uh, delegates as well. And I, I hope they'll agree to whatever I'm going to say. At Alam Iqbal Open University, we have almost 1.4 million registered students at the moment uh, in different degree programs. Um, we used to offer the programs in a conventional distance education mode uh, through printed material, sending the material in, in, in printed form to the students and then having, uh, say, face-to-face -face sessions, which now people actually normally refer to as a hybrid mode of learning where the learning material is sent to the students either electronically or in a hard form. <clears throat> 
uh, for later discussion in a face to face uh, we changed it. i mean a year ago we decided better learning experience to the students and improve the learning extent of learning actually for the learners uh, and we prepared for it and before this pandemic started we were ready really to embark upon um, the open distance learning world uh, with specifically designed softwares we we had now a learning management system through which uh, you'll be surprised to know uh, we connect almost 35 to 40000 students every day in 120 in more than 120 virtual classrooms whereby teachers actually take online lectures in a live synchronous mode uh, the students are also connected. The students can have even an interactive session or a question answer session with the teachers as well at point where they are allowed to do so. Uh, so that, I mean, an, an interactivity could be established instead of having a kind of monologue or delivering the lectures or having a recorded lectures uh, sent towards the students. Uh, um, that, that environment, which we are actually uh, using, provides a better interactive, interactive world for the students and teachers both. Um, and this is necessary because when you talk about any learning environment, obviously, needless to mention, it, it actually requires three basic ingredients. Uh, the content, obviously. Um, so we, we have a whole setup through which the content is developed. Once you have got that content, um, an expert or a teacher or, uh, is to deliver the content, uh, keeping in view certain learning outcomes which are to be achieved. And then we have got that assessment mode as well. So these three basically constitute the basic learning cycle, whether you are conducting your sessions in a face-to-face -face mode, and obviously, same is true about uh, the open distance learning mode as well. The missing component in this whole scenario was basically the content delivery. And we assumed at some point, probably because we were not very much prepared, at, at, I mean, this is one of the reasons, we thought the same kind of lecturing we do during a face-to-face -face mode or using the same PPT slides, for example, we prepare in a face-to-face -face mode, for example, could really would surface the need of delivering the learning material towards the students in an asynchronous mode as well. And that probably created, I mean, a kind of uh, communication gap, uh, dissatisfaction at some point, and, and compromise on the learning or extent of learning when it comes to the learners. I mean, we, we obviously, whatever we are doing, this is for the learners. Every policy in an academic world is to be student centric. So my point of view, my humble view in this regards is we should really consider training our faculty members because learning pedagogies and pedagogical skills required for the faculty members as well in a face to face and in open distance learning mode are a bit different. We need to train our teachers really to take lectures in this distance learning mode. Uh, and obviously we, we can at some point later in, in, in the day or at any other session, we can talk about the assessment methods as well. So that was one missing component. I mean, and this is what I could really infer from the talk from, from, from the student experiences that they were talking with their moderators. Um, so uh, one thing which I could really then in the, I mean, after, uh, I mean, closing this part of the discussion, I could really request all, all colleagues uh, who are at the hem of affairs of the medical institutions and medical schools. Uh, I think, I mean, we should not really, should not be really thinking of post pandemic situation. This is a situation which should be taken as an opportunity to have more specific designed learning environments that we, we so that we could really use those learning environments for accessing the students and in any any uh, uh, say extraordinary situation the precious time of the students could be saved um, another very important aspect at the same junction I, I would like to say is about the content development as well uh, since I'm a professor of computing and having that bias in mind, I have also been working at Alam Iqbal Open University to develop the content which could provide a virtual kind of environment to the students so that they can feel as if they are interacting with the patients. I know, I mean, they, they use uh, this virtual patient, uh, I mean, kind of simulated environment or any diagnostic software, for example, especially when it comes to the clinical subjects. I think, I mean, the, 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 the medical colleges now should think of developing the specialized content, especially for uh, uh, the subjects in the clinical domains, 
using virtual reality and augmented reality techniques. And it's such a wonderful world. Um, you, you actually uh, can literally feel as if you are touching a patient. You, you, you are actually getting the symptoms from, the, from, from a patient if you have that specifically designed content using VR and AR techniques, which is now quite mature. And I've seen certain content in the medical domains as well, because I'm not trying to really prepare and I have discussed with your vice chancellor at Shifa as well uh, to develop a curriculum for, mas for offering a master's degree in public health. And we have been exploring these options as well to having, uh, for, for having a more kind of uh, 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 to have a content which can provide a better um, learning experience and feel of a patient as well uh, using these VR and AR techniques. So this is something which the medical schools should be really, I mean, I would humbly suggest can, can really look into the possibility of having such a content. And building on this discussion in the end, I could only say uh, there is a strong need to really collaborate between the medical schools. Uh, within the country and out of the country as well. Based on the feedback these students have provided, we should prepare a roadmap of content development and content delivery strategy so that the learning experience of the students can be improved. And for that purpose, I'm working at Alama Iqbal Open University to have Pakistan MOOCs uh, where I will be developing content for universities, general universities uh, in Pakistan uh, by engaging best of the best teacher available in Pakistan or even abroad um, so that the same kind of uh, quality content can be provided to the students where there, there could be no qualified teacher available in, in remote areas of Pakistan. And similarly for the medical uh, subjects, I think um, you have wonderful resources in Pakistan and even abroad. Um, let's have medical MOOCs, for example, or med MOOCs of Pakistan, uh, which could really uh, be developed gradually uh, by engaging experts from around uh, Pakistan and from, from outside of the Pakistan, so that whenever such a situation comes, or I mean, if we can even uh, use, I mean, a kind of hybrid mode where some of the courses, for example, in the basic sciences, I mean, I, I know during first year and second year, you, you actually uh, enroll certain courses in this domain in community medicine and basic sciences. This can be really offered in an uh, online mode, but specifically in a synchronous mode, not an, in, in asynchronous mode. And for the clinical subjects, if you could gradually develop VR and AR based content, then probably we can have this mix and match type of stuff um, to, to have a better learning environment. Um, I, I can uh, I mean, respond to any specific query if someone likes to say, because I won't be right person really to talk about the medical education as say as such. Um, but um, I can only offer uh, um, that Alama Iqbal Open University based on my institution's experience and expertise um, in offering programs in ODL mode can offer uh, this facility of a partnership collaboration to any, any partner institution in Pakistan. God bless you, thank you. Thank you so Dr. much. Far. Yes, sir. thank you so much, Dr. Zia. That was a really interesting perspective. And uh, I would again like to repeat that at the end of this discussion, an online feedback form will be shared, and those who fill this feedback form, those uh, participants will be sent an uh, e certificate and CME credits. So I will now request Dr. I will now request. Uh, Dr. Aisha Abdullah from Peshawar Medical College to say a few words about her views on the discussions which she saw in her interactive session. So Dr. Aisha, we will request you to keep it for three minutes, three to four minutes. Okay. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum everybody. Uh, it was a very nice experience and I'm grateful to the organizers, especially uh, Professor Muhammad Iqbal Sahab. Uh, Dr. Fahad and uh, Professor Abida and uh, Dr. Vakas for giving us this opportunity. I was uh, in the breakout rooms and um, I could see that the students were trying to express themselves very uh, earnestly and sincerely. And if uh, I'm allowed to, uh, Dr. Fahad, share my screen, I have uh, drawn diagrammatically what they were saying into the factors that uh, have emerged from their discussion. Uh, I'll try to make it as brief as possible. I think it should not take more than a minute or two. So can I share my screen? Yes, you please try now. Try sharing it now. Okay. 
So it might be a little messy because we didn't have much time, but I still thought that um, uh, instead of me speaking about it, it would be better if I can portray it. The data that was coming from the students was very rich, mashallah. They were giving very uh, good suggestions and they were coming up with very nice um, ideas. Now I'm, um, I'm going to summarize it in terms of three aspects that I saw in these discussions. The opportunities and challenges, which is the, in the name of the webinar as well, and some elaboration points, which I was expecting based on my six months experience of online education that we had. Um, and I was expecting that these things would come up, but they did not. So uh, in terms of the first session that we had, we, the students were focused on discussing teaching and learning in their institutions. The main themes that I could see were accessibility of resources, preparedness uh, of the students and the system, and the educational management that they had to go through, preferences of methods for uh, teaching and learning, the effectiveness of their teaching and learning in terms of the outcomes, the netiquette and psychosocial factors that were there, especially that they had to experience because of the um, co uh, pandemic of COVID, COVID that they were experiencing at their homes, the cost of it. And then there were certain peripheral factors that were related to that theme in which you can see the brown co colored factors are the ones that were the challenges and the blue one came up as the strengths. In certain areas, the uh, strength was the, the flexibility in access and the broader access. Now, these were the areas from uh, of the, where the students were from cities, the peripheral areas and from villages, uh, this, the same strength was uh, a challenge. Uh, when it came to preparedness and educational management, I, I heard the students uh, saying that they were not very well prepared for it, although they are the IT natives, but uh, they uh, appreciated their teachers who were much more prepared than themselves. And they, in, in fact, thought that the system and their teachers were much more resilient than they expected. The management and the students needed preparedness in terms of uh, uh, the IT skills that they needed. Uh, just surfing on Facebook and using it for educational purpose, uh, IT is a, a different story. Now, when, uh, the, when, I, when the different aspects that were related to preferences of methods were discussed, synchronous and asynchronous teaching and learning came as a strength and a weakness both. In areas where the students did not have good access of internet, it came as a challenge. In areas where the students had good internet, the, the synchronous uh, method of teaching and learning came as a strength. The flexibility that it offered, the personalized uh, learning interface, that also came as a strength. And the interaction that the students could have in synchronous, uh, that is understandable. Uh, skills, they f thought that the skills, that uh, the important thing of skills and the acquisition of skills was difficult uh, in, during this online education. In terms of effectiveness, the confidence that they gained from uh, the online learning was enough for them. And they think that they don't need a remedial learning when they come back for face to face, because this was particularly asked from them that when you come back for face to face, would you ask for remedials on these and the groups that I uh, was uh, in, they did not want any remedials on that. The reproducibility of assessment for they had many things attached to assessment and um, that I would show you in the assessment diagram. Uh, psychosocial factor, there were many, but because I think because of the limitation of time, they could not discuss that. The issue of language, the issue of camera anxiety, the inclusiveness uh, that was lacking. If somebody is quiet and is not turning on the camera, you can't force them to do that. Uh, the loss of interpersonal interaction with among the teacher and the, among the students as well came out as certain factors that were challenging. In terms of cost, uh, the internet cost, the cost of the device and the environment. I mean, you cannot just sit in, in, in any place and go for a live session. You have to have a decent background and a decent environment for it uh, so that you are comfortable with the rest of the um, participants. Now, the uh, central focus of all of this was still learning. The comorbidity of COVID-19 was there and students had a lot of stress because of that. In terms of knowledge, skills, and attitude, they, had, um, they were comfortable with the knowledge that they had gained. But about the attitude and the skills domain, the students uh, were not that confident, and they were not comfortable with that. 
Now, in terms of assessment, these were the main uh, themes that ca came up. The uh, the problems with internet access, specifically the anxiety that was partly related to it, the fairness of the assessments and cheating, and the continuity of academic timeline that was possible because of that. Uh, anxiety was related to somehow with comfort with certain tools, uh, which with the students were comfortable with earlier, and then on uh, in case of online, like the open books and other um, methods of assessment, they were not familiar with that. And they had some problem with that, and that increased the anxiety as well. The dexterity with e skills, with working with this, uh, with the screens and clicking the wrong button on, on an assignment or an assessment when it is timed, the loss of time and the marks as well. The synchronicity came as a problem here for assessments. Uh, the inbuilt assessment, the formative assessment, they helped. The assignments helped, and the open book assessments, uh, students favored that as well. About the fairness and cheating of exams, students were uh, convinced that the exam online assessments were not very fair, and a lot of cheating did happen. And they were thought that proctoring may not help, and something has to be done with the um, character building and the professionalism of students so that they don't opt for cheating. Uh, but the options that they thought were could help. Uh, in safeguarding against cheating were this open book assessments and uh, um, items that are gener generated in a manner that are addressing the critical thinking and definitely the focus on um, uh, professionalism. The alignment, some of the students said that the alignment was not very good in case of online assessments. Now, how should it continue? Strangely, I was hoping that this theme would come up in the teaching and learning and students may say that, yes, we would like to continue it. But although they were against the assessments um, and they were against online assessment in many of its forms, but they still wanted it to continue in some form. The online assessments with less of the stress and less of the anxiety uh, could continue. How fair and representative the assessments were of the students' competence and how much did it contribute to students' learning? Now, that was one question that students did not explicitly answer. Now for the null points for further elaboration, the null points, the points that I was expecting that would be focused or more discussed, but were not discussed that much. Less contact with the patient. That did not come up as a very big challenge from, uh, from the students. Maybe that the group that I was in were not more of the clinical students. More of the uh, focus on scoring rather than learning. Why is the focus of the students more on the scoring getting the score and not on the learning and that is what made the uh, option of cheating so lucrative less representation of the public sector medical colleges it was there but none of the students raised that as well less focus on uh, professional development of the student peer influences and the, the less of the physical presence of their peers and the effect that it had on their learning the comorbid effect of pandemic and the stress of assessments uh, during this time period, and finally, how fair and representative the assessments were. So I would, uh, I would suggest um, to the organizers of this uh, webinar that we should not stop here. You have had a, mashallah, a very nice methodology in which you have uh, created a bond between two important stakeholders of, the, uh, of our educational system, the teacher and the student. The end user is the patient. But we are the two important stakeholders. And you have bonded them on getting the views of the students. So it, it's a very nice thing that you have done. But we should not stop here. And we should lead this discussion to a conclusive end. And the things, if you could have another round or you could contact these students again and you can find them to get to some conclusion, because I, I still feel that they were not as much open as they could have been, maybe because of the time limitation. And if they are, if they are more open and they are more suggestive than just indicating what were the strengths and what were the weaknesses. Thank you very much once again, especially Dr. Fahad. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Asha. And that was a very interesting perspective. And we are also fortunate to have Dr. Rahila Yasmin in this webinar right now from Rifa University. She is the Dean of Rifa Academy of Research and Education, and she's also the Director of OREC, Director of MHP and CHP programs at Rifa University. I will request her to give her opinion on the discussions which she observed between students and moderators on e-learning in one, two, or three minutes. 
Uh, thank you, Dr. Fahad. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Aisha has given a very good, uh, she has summarized very nicely all the factors which promote the online learning and the factor which hamper the online learning. I'll add uh, one or two points more. Uh, we have a student from Aga Khan University, from Dow University of Health Sciences, from uh, Rifa International University and Shifa College of Medicine. Uh, they were from the first year, second year, fourth year, and third year. They contribute very well. Uh, they said initially they faced problem with the online teaching and learning, but so slowly and gradually teachers and they, they got equipped with the problems they faced, with the technology, with the electricity problem, with the use of LMS and all that. And uh, at the end, we conclude that there is a problem in learning the psychomotor skill. So the student wants, they concluded that they want face-to-face -face learning to learn the psychomotor skill, whether they are in first year, second year, third year, final year. So we have to arrange sort of blended learning from them to teach them the psychomotor skill, or we can use the classroom. We can use the flipped classroom mo uh, module and mode to teach them the psychomotor skill. Regarding the assessment, uh, they were a little, they, they, all of them said they are relaxed in the online assessment mode because they were free sitting at the home and doing their pa paper at their mode. Some of them said that there was a strong Zoom proctoring. Some of them said that there was a no proctoring, but the question was of a higher level uh, of application level they're supposed to solve it. So that was challenging for us. There was a no time for cheating. We were just busy in solving the question. Uh, but they are uh, satisfied with the online teaching and learning and assessment. But uh, if we deal with the challenges and the problems coming during the teaching and learning and training of the teachers and training of the student as well, we can cope this COVID era successfully. Thank you. Thank you, Fahad. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. And so now I will request Dean of Faculty of Health Sciences of Shifa Tamir Millage University, Professor Dr. Muhammad Amir, to share a few words with us. Okay, thank you, Fahad. Actually, uh, you know, I feel uh, honored that uh, we are hosting such a webinar and uh, it has been quite engaging uh, from the word go. And uh, uh, I'm really thankful to all the uh, participants, the faculty and students and uh, nationally as well as globally. So we are honored on that aspect. So many things have emerged. What I realized uh, at the end of the breakout uh, rooms, discussions and uh, the input from the, were the speakers, that uh, it's still uh, not the end. It may be the beginning. And uh, as Dr. Uh, Aisha said, that we should be having a conclusive, uh, you see, a discussion on that. I think that will come on its own pace, but uh, yes, this was an effort to have a collaboration from all the students and faculty of uh, different medical colleges we could, we could contact and we could get uh, I mean, them on board. And uh, this idea of collaboration and the, uh, the discussion which has occurred simultaneously in about 10 breakout rooms is going to be uh, uh, I think uh, a food for thought for all of us, the moderators uh, are requested to, uh, I mean, uh, pile up their data and uh, give to the, uh, the medical educationists and they're going to utilize it for the future, uh, you know, curricular uh, aspects. The, the simple idea we started off as the pandemic struck us that we should not waste our time. And that's the reason from uh, the very first day, the idea was at our institution, like other institutions, that uh, the students as well as the faculty should feel that this period, whatever uh, period it's going to be, should be utilized as best as we can. So all the apprehension and all the ideas which have emerged out of the discussion of the students and faculty have given us an idea that at least there was some gain in these five months it may not be the optimum, but still, even if it was left less than optimum, it has at least gone to an extent where you can add further on that. And that's what we are going to uh, do in, in, in the upcoming months, that whatever uh, deficiencies were there, we are going to make up on that. So face-to-face -face teaching, the hybrid type of teaching, synchronous and asynchronous, all are going to be in place. But one thing is, for quite some time, we may not be able to have the 
the gathering of students in the lecture rooms are in the areas where they used to be about five, six months ago. So most of that part has already been uh, dealt with in the online delivery of the curriculum. And uh, the, the remaining part is going to be, uh, inshallah, delivered, assessed in the coming months as they have in their curriculum. So there has been less disruption what we find if we had uh, as compared to if we had not, uh, had not utilized this time and we would have gone in our uh, curriculum calendars maybe by six months or seven months delay but now we are uh, on about two to three months and not much. So uh, I, I will assure the students and faculty that uh, uh, they should feel comfortable that they have gained something and they are going to, uh, you see, um, enhance their knowledge and make up their deficiencies in future. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, uh, for some positive enlightening words. And before I request our Vice Chancellor, Professor Dr. Muhammad Iqbal to say concluding remarks, I will really thank our university, our dean, our vice chancellor to give us all, give all the faculty members and students autonomy and sense of empowerment to let us go ahead with all sorts of ambitious projects and proposals. The beauty of Shifat Amri Village University is that it does encourage innovation and creativity. So I thank you for giving the webinar committee this opportunity to go ahead with this project. Over to you, sir, uh, vice chancellor. Sir. Uh, first of all, I thank to my friend um, and Dr. Zayal Qayyum Saab for sparing his very valuable time and very valuable suggestion. He is the man of uh, uh, computer science and ICT. I think his uh, advice and his guidance is uh, vital for the uh, further development of online education system and maybe hybrid education system. I am also thankful to uh, Professor Janet from Liverpool. She is always willing uh, and she has been teaching in Pakistan to the medical educationists over the last 10 years and we are thankful and this was actually her idea to seek the um, uh, opinion of the students in, the, in developing the curricula and also the delivery of the curricula uh, while um, uh, uh, in this COVID period and particularly uh, after the COVID period. I am also thankful to Dr. Aisha from Peshawar Medical College and Dr. Uh, uh, Professor Hiram, Hiram uh, Professor of Instructional Design and Technology at UCL uh, Florida. Florida. Thank you very much for all of you and uh, our faculty worked day and night over the last uh, two weeks to organize this, uh, it's, it seems that this one and a half hour is just passed uh, like anything, but, uh, but our faculty, they work day and night over the last uh, um, probably more than two weeks. And uh, they have, uh, uh, first, uh, uh, they, they can capsulize this idea and they, thereafter it, it was materialized. I just, uh, I was told that uh, there were Ten institution, there was Shifa College of Medicine, Shifa Tamir Milit University, Khan Medical, uh, uh, Medical College, Khan University, Dao University of <coughs> Health Sciences, Peshawar Medical College, Islamic International Medical College, uh, Rawal Pindi, Ziauddin Medical University, Shalimar uh, Medical College, CMH College, Lahore, Karachi Institute of Medical Sciences, and our, um, uh, naturally, uh, the Lama Iqbal Open University and our foreign <coughs> collaborator as well. Uh, as uh, uh, we, everyone agreed that we should learn from the experience and the feedback of our students, whatever the feedback is, it's very valuable because they are very valuable, um, not an expert in the field, but they are expert learners. They are expert in learning as well. And their feedback is very uh, crucial for the development, for the uh, for development of future curriculum, cu curricular contents, its delivery, and also its feedback, its uh, evaluation as well. So, inshallah, we will continue our struggle. And uh, I just want to inform you that Shifa uh, Tabir Ibadat University has developed its own indigenous learning man management system. Uh, and uh, I'm uh, grateful to Professor Ziaul Kajum, who advised me about two months back that if you want to continue your uh, uh, online system, 
uh, of education you need to develop your own system thank you very much sir but uh, at the same time i just want to uh, uh, thank every one of you and and uh, we we will continue inshallah we will direct redirect our resources towards the online uh, online uh, development of online material and this uh, covid opportunity is also provided us an opportunity uh, it it is a covid uh, uh, provides us a, a sorry an opportunity to unite so we didn't have an opportunity to talk with each other in such a manner as we talk today and in the past as well so this provided us an opportunity to play and uh, bring all our resources together to build up the better curricular content better delivery system and better better evaluation system uh, assessment system for our students as well as for our patients as far as the patient teaching is concerned the simulation is very important and i i know that in in uh, aviation industry the first one probably developed the uh, this uh, uh, the, the uh, this uh, uh, system of learning but uh, in medical sciences over the last 20 years since the uh, key held uh, key hold revolution uh, it has be become a mandatory for the simulation uh, to develop simulation labs and inshallah in a very few, near future we will be able to develop a level 2 simulation lab here as well and i i do agree that um, uh, we an expert teacher need to devise what can be delivered on online and what can be delivered to face to face or uh, and the next era is probably era of hybridization or era of blending so we need to blend both the the online education as well as the our uh, uh face to face education and an expert teacher can always devise a better understanding and a be better mechanism how to deliver online and how to deliver deliver face to face to the to our students and this also gave us an opportunity to interact with a with a whole world so this online education system has brought out us from the rooms from the institution to the world so now the world is becoming more and more open for every one of us for the, those students who are in a remote area or the less privileged institution can avail the opportunity of the better teachers and the better understanding of the subject with this i i say thank you to everyone and particularly to our organizers and the faculty, our faculty and i appreciate their spirit and i i believe that we will be continuing inshallah in the, and we will come up with the with the next webinar inshallah very soon and thank you very much thank you sir uh, i will now request you to conclude this webinar with dua and after which a link for evaluation and feedback form will be shared in the chat box uh, this says uh, this is without uh, any uh, tea and uh, i i offer you uh, you all of you uh, the very good uh, high tea at your home or wherever you are sitting <laughs> <laughs> thank you and dua uh, that's all أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خص إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر. Thank you very much. Thank you. شكرا لي. Thank you very much. Thank you very much from Pakistan. إسلام أباد. إسلام أباد. From Ishfa Ishfa College of Medicine. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much Allah Hafiz Allah Dr. Bakas if you could please share the link for the feedback form or could ask uh, Dr. Um, I have shared it and that's why I'm not closing the meeting so that everyone can click on the feedback form in the chat box please find it I am posting uh, copy pasting it again and thank you so much dr asusi for joining us i hope the interaction which you which you saw which you observed was interesting enough oh thank and you so much like so honored i'd be amiss not to thank everyone here but also to recognize ben danes who is a student at our university 
that listened to three webinars faculty and an, another professor and I did for the medical profession in the US. And then Ben, which was one of my active students, said, what about our opinion on all this? And he really reminded me about the importance of that. And then we put together the student session. And so I want to spend just the last minute to recognize Ben's efforts. He continues to remind me how important it is to listen to students. And I don't want to say just students. I think we need to look at this as a partnership. You know, the, the fast, some students are saying teachers need to be prepared. Of course, the teachers are saying the students need to be prepared. I think in an emergency situation such as COVID, the best part of humanity comes to life when we all work together. And if there's any silver lining in this COVID and the pandemic, it's us bringing us all together, not just students and teachers, but people from around the world. I so enjoyed seeing everyone here today and so appreciate this opportunity to get to know some people a little bit more. I just hope this is just the beginning of many more collaborations. Thank you. And uh, we also have Dr. Alam share with us. I am his student through webinars. He is, uh, he is usually he is in Malaysia um, and would like to thank him for joining us. Dr. Alam, if you could, if you would like to say a few words too, if you, would, if you can hear us. We also uh, have Dr. Gohar Bajit here. Yeah, just, and Dr. Farooq Rator as well. Dr. Uh, Gohar is still here. Dr. Gohar, would you like to say something? Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, sorry, I am in Canada. It's morning here, rather early morning. It's It was Saturday, but uh, uh, I... Uh, very uh, gladly participated. I was, in fact, enthusiastically waiting for this webinar to happen because I did want to listen to the student's perspective, which is being ignored by till now, I would say. And uh, I strongly believe that the, the whole educational system, when I say the educational system, it means all aspects and dimensions of educational environment, including the way curricula are designed and the learning objectives are set and the modes of information transfer are selected and the instructional design is prepared and even I would say the assessments are prepared. Every single thing has to be uh, student centered. And uh, this major shift that I'm seeing in that spices model component of uh, from teacher centeredness to student centeredness uh, I think online educational systems and the specificities of the learning management systems that are coming up, if student centeredness is uh, not at the core of it, we would miss the whole point. So uh, with this, uh, I must say that all these LMS systems and their instructional design, students must be uh, involved in all these activities very actively and uh, hope that we will see a very uh, bright future coming up with this, uh, the new norms that are uh, being set. And very warm uh, uh, regards to all my colleagues there from WHO, uh, keep this wonderful work up and we will be collaborating with you inshallah in future to take the further lead on these aspects. Have a good day. Thank you so much. Um, I will now close the meeting. Allah Hafiz, thank you so much, everyone, once again. Allah Hafiz, Allah Hafiz, bye-bye. Thank you all, Allah Hafiz, thank you. Allah Hafiz.